welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I am here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? I'm doing all right. How are you today? Pretty good. Yeah? Enjoying this good Friday. This good Friday. Yep. Yeah. Um, so so Friday. happy Easter to everybody. Yep. Yeah. That's a good way to start, right? Yeah. It's still very bright out. It's supposed to rain all day. Yeah, it didn't rain at all. And <laughs> not, not one drop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Those so. weathermen <laughs> killing it again. That must be the best job ever. Just be wrong all the time. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's like being in government. <laughs> yeah, right? Exactly. <laughs> Meteorology and weathermen. You can be wrong every time and continue to get more money. Yep, exactly. You uh, just gave us a little more. We could have got that weather report right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We just need a little bit more money. We'll finally get it. Yep. Well, you know, our, our, our instruments aren't sensitive enough. We just need more money to invest in. Right. Better instrumentation. <laughs> you gotta invest in the weather. Yeah. Well, <laughs> the government might be doing that. Yeah, they're trying to. There's uh, there's some stories out yeah. there. Yeah. I, I don't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> you don't buy it. <laughs> no. Um, but hey. Uh, yeah. So, new whiskey. Yeah. So what are we drinking on? We are drinking Wilderness Trail uh, Bottled and Bond. Ooh. Um, Straight bourbon, weeded bourbon. They have two kinds. They have a high rye and a weeded bourbon. And a rye. But yeah. <laughs> this isn't, yeah. This isn't the high rye or the rye. This is the weeded one. I got this because I thought you would like it. And um, I do. I got a single barrel of the high rye bourbon. Yeah. Because you thought you would like it. Because, I, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, you know, I yeah. I like all kinds of whiskeys. Oh, yeah. And I appreciate them all on their own terms. Yeah. Um, There are bad whiskeys. I'm not... I'm not trying to say that 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 in the thing. Yeah, yeah, there there are things that are just bad. Yeah, but um, <laughs> I'd like to say this is too expensive to be bad, but that's not always true. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but uh, I I've been hearing things. It's a fairly new distillery, and they've just kind of taken off. Uh, they were people that were in the guys that started it were people that were in the business for um a while selling yeast strains. Yeah, and then they decided, you know, like they ended up having to troubleshoot other thing things in other distilleries all the time and learned a lot about it. And they're like, you know what? Hey, we could do this. Why don't we just make our own <laughs> whiskey? And yeah. um, well, they're doing a pretty good job. Like I say, I, I definitely like this. Yeah, yeah, this is tasty. Um, I, I, it's it's a little pricey. But it is good. Um, and I, I wanted to try, yeah, I wanted to try this distillery. So, yeah. And it's probably going to get better because this is a fresh crack. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it'll, it'll open up a little bit as probably. It, as, be, it gets some, as it gets some air in it. Yeah. Um, and it's uh, one of the few sweet mashes out there. Yeah. And that's, uh, that's kind of neat. I, <laughs> I don't, was it something that I heard somebody say or saw somebody put online? Uh, about whiskey like well i only like sour mash well uh, that lucky covers, for you covers that's, most uh, right almost everything <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right? um so uh if that's your prerequisite you got plenty to choose from exactly yeah exactly it's not just jack daniels yeah exactly um so anyway i i yeah i'm i'm glad i purchased this and we'll see if i have room for more sometime in the future yeah once you get yourself trapped in kind of a serious bourbon collection. <laughs> it tends to just spiral. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I run out of cabinet space. I'm going to have to buy a new house just to... <laughs> Got to buy some new cabinets. <laughs> well, I don't have enough space in my kitchen. My kitchen sucks. Yeah. We'll, we'll figure it out. Oh, yeah. When I moved to Shelbyville. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, so... I wanted to start kind of where we left off because uh, I hadn't had a lot of time to really research for the last podcast because I'd been really sick. Well, not really sick, but, well, pretty sick. (laughs) Yeah. Um, And uh, so we talked a little bit about the Restrict Act, but I didn't have a lot of language from the Act uh, itself. And so I did... Uh, I wrote down this part because I think this is this is important. It just kind of illustrates how broad this the, thing the is. The law is. Yeah. yeah. Um, it gives the Secretary of Commerce the power to 
quote, identify, deter, disrupt, prevent, prohibit, investigate, or otherwise mitigate, end quote, um, anything that they believe, the Secretary of Commerce believes, is, quote, an undue or unacceptable risk, end quote, uh, by any person or property in a wide range of areas. Um, wow, that seems like a lot of latitude. Yeah, and it's all from the Secretary of Commerce. It's, an, again, you know, like passing down yeah. the, uh, this, it's the actual just an, enforcement an appointed, of the law. Yeah, it's an appointed bureaucrat. Mm-hmm. Um, and... Like the word risk, what does that even, Yeah, I mean, like who, def- <laughs> who defines the risk? Like what kind of risk? I, I and maybe there's an answer later in this because, um, those, <coughs> those other areas are, you know, the wide range of areas, um, includes quote, coercive or criminal activities by a foreign adversary that are designed to undermine democratic processes and institutions or steer policy and regulatory decisions in favor of the strategic obje- objectives of a foreign adversary to the detriment of the national security of the United States, end quote. Oh, yeah. Now, it does say foreign adversary, but <laughs> yeah. so does the FISA Act, and yet somehow yeah. um, they, they're, uh, they use it to surveil Americans with some regularity, yeah. it seems. Um, also, like coercive like coercive activities so i don't know they say coercive or criminal activities and that seems weird to me too because that's like non-criminal activities that we don't like yeah exactly <laughs> is that how you define coercive i'm i'm just not sure like the language is so is so broad and nebulous like most laws that can be ter- interpreted in almost any way and um it says are designed to undermine uh, democratic processes and so on design to how do they know what's in the mind of the person who yeah who's doing executed it. this thing yeah. yeah so well especially when you're talking about social media companies anyway mm-hmm. i mean you're basically I, I don't know it's just it's strange to me how you how you come up with this idea okay well this is what they were trying to do Mm-hmm. But using the people who are posting on social media to do it, like, yeah, I mean, I get that they use algorithms to to sway people and move people different directions. I don't know. It just it all seems insane to try to come up with some way to regulate this. I don't know. Yeah, how broadly I mean, are we like, defining for an adversary? Yeah. Um, I don't know. There's a lot of there's a lot of questions in, in this. It seems to me, and uh, I feel like. That if the way it's written, if they wanted, they could go after us. Yeah. For, um, you know, speaking out against uh, funding and arming Ukraine. Yeah. We're putting out disinformation. Well, not even by that, but we're we're giving true information, but that may be <laughs> but it's uh, contrary in favor to what of the... the strategic objectives of a foreign adversary. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, so... Yeah, and and to the detriment of the national security of the United States. Again, according to whom? Yeah. What what if um, something that is in the best interest of the people of the United States is also in the best interest of the strategic objectives of a foreign adversary? Yeah. Like, for example, <laughs> stopping giving money and weaponry to Ukraine. Yeah. Which I th- I absolutely firmly believe is in the best interest of the people of the United States. Oh yeah, but it's definitely in the best interest of the the uh, you know Russian government as well. Yeah. Frankly, I think it's in the best interest of the Ukrainian. I think it's the best thing for everybody involved, <laughs> yeah. except for the military contractors. Yeah, who are doing quite who, well. On who this. are running the show, by the way? Yeah, more or less. Um, they're just I don't know. They're responsible for so much funding of pol- politicians. Yeah. But in the end, it's the politicians that have the control. This is actually another one of those points that I always end up in conflict with with people that are more on the left or in the like socialist camp. Yeah. Uh, this whole or the people that are like, you know, talk about end stage capitalism, um, where the corporations control the government. So I'm getting off on a tangent here, but yeah. I just I don't see it that way. Like I, I see the point. I see the point that they're making. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Corporations have undue influence on the government because they have money. Yeah. Um, they have money to give 
uh, to government in order to craft policies favorable to them. Yeah. But in the end, the entity with the power is still the government. Yeah. I, I mean, there's <laughs> just no way around it. Like, if, if push comes to shove and the interests of a politician are misaligned with their corporate sponsors... It's the corporate sponsor that's going to get screwed, not the politician. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, they may get them out in the next election. They may manage to fund another campaign against the, the person that they're at odds with now. But in the meantime, that politician has the power over the corporation, not the other way around. Oh, absolutely. And, and that will always be the case as far as I can tell. Yeah. So, anyway... Uh, so that's the thing with the with the Restrict Act. It is um, a very broad, uh, nebulous uh, bill that gives the Secretary of Commerce really wide latitude to um, control businesses in a huge range of areas for almost anything that they deem to be a risk of any kind to anything related to national security, which is often the case with these bills. Like, national security trumps everything. Yeah. I mean, I disagree, but yeah, that's, yeah, that's, but that's the way. that's the w- pecking order of government. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the way they define national security is very, very different from the way I think most Americans would define national security. Yeah. This should be national offense. Right. That's uh, they should just be explicit about what they mean, right? Yeah, like exactly. in defense of the empire. Exactly. Yeah. This is what we'll do instead of um in in terms of national security. Because yeah. I think it's hard to look back over the last 30 years or more. Yeah. Um and not see that the things that we were prompted to do to defend our national security all these wars in the Middle East and North Africa and, and across Asia and, it's, and everything. It's done has, nothing but made things worse. Yeah. Like has, it's made the, yeah, we're hated more. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, it's, it's threatened national security more than if we had done nothing at all. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so. Um, so that's all I really have on that. I just wanted to give an update and so give people an idea. So have they passed this bill yet? I don't think so. I don't think they have either. Um, I mean, I don't know. That was the reason I was asking. I, I would hope that it would have been... Uh, and it would have gotten more enough press to get in front of me. Yeah. I mean, I look at anti-war every day. I can't imagine that that this would have, have been, yeah. that I had missed it somehow. Yeah. I think that there would have been a dozen articles over a few days about it if it had passed. Yeah. But even the fact that it's out there is a problem. Yes. I mean, it's a th- so the thing that got me into politics actually was the Patriot Act. Yeah. Yeah, and and, that, actually, yeah. and it wasn't even the Patriot Act, because at the time I wasn't paying attention to that kind of thing. It yeah. was the renewal of the Patriot Act yep. uh, that got me into politics. Because, um, and actually, it was uh, Jen Briney at Congressional Dish, yeah, which was one of the early podcasts that I listened to, um, and I haven't listened to it in a while. And I almost feel bad about it, and it was definitely the first pa- podcast that I contributed to. Yeah, uh, but. She did a really fantastic episode um, on the the Patriot Act and the Freedom Act, yeah. uh, and with you know she has really she has really good notes. If we did notes like her, that, that <laughs> people would yeah. wouldn't argue with us so much probably. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know she had her notes that all had links to the bills with that took you to the the, the point the in the bill where yeah. the yeah. And uh, I, I started reading through all this stuff, and I was like, how did they pull this over on us? What? Yeah, all right. <laughs> Why aren't we all fighting about this? And that's what got me into this in the first place. Well, it's because they passed it right after 9-11. And, and people were ready for it. Like, mm-hmm. that was the right time to do a bill like that. Because I remember arguing with people when they before they passed it. Mm-hmm. Like, I was like, this is horrible. Like, we're going to regret this down the road. Like, you know, all of the stuff we talk about now, you know, this is going to be used against us at some point. Um, and arguing with people about, oh, well, we got to do something. We can't have another 9-11. Mm-hmm. Like, that was the that was the talking point. Yeah. And um, and so since then, like, now people just don't pay that much. We're, we're numb to it. Yeah. Well, I guess the question is, have they... Um have they talked enough about China, the threat of China, the threat of China, the threat of China, 
and uh, ref- keep referring to this as the TikTok ban. Yeah. To get people to be complacent again. Well, I, I don't think so because, and that's where their mistake is at. And as far as um, labeling it or the labeling of it being a TikTok ban, because mm-hmm. there are way too many people that enjoy TikTok. Yeah, like, no, <laughs> so like, that was a mistake. It's not actually as, as strong a point as they wanted. No, it to be. because people no. love TikTok, man. Like, I mean, and I'm like, so you know, directly in my house, there's three heavy TikTok users. You know, yeah. But you just talk to people on the street everywhere. Like, they use some TikTok. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. People don't want it banned. <laughs> yeah. Well, good thing because that wasn't that wasn't all this does. <laughs> yeah. It was exactly like mm-hmm. I say. So if you haven't, I guess contact your politicians and say, no, 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 <laughs> Don't no, take no. away my TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> the whole thing's absurd anyway. That, yeah. that whole argument is, I, I think, ridiculous. Yeah. But, yeah, anything the Secretary of Commerce believes is an undue or unacceptable risk. Yeah. They can regulate that's gonna be us. Or actually, let me go back to the list of things that they can do just yeah, to just to drive it home. Yeah, um, identify, deter, disrupt, prevent, prohibit, investigate, or otherwise mitigate. Yeah, and just so everybody remembers, remember what happened with the um, with the um, ah, I'm blanking those names. Joe Biden's son. Oh, Hunter? Yeah, the Hunter Biden laptop. Like, Mm -hmm. if they want to squash a story, they can squash a story. Like, it will disappear. I mean, it may not disappear completely, but, like, like doing away with the links. I mean, Mm -hmm. they have an extensive power to shut stuff up. Yeah. Controlling information is uh, really valuable to uh, an authoritarian government. Oh, yeah. Or any kind of government, really. Yeah. Um, But it's a... It's a particularly prized tool of authoritarianism, controlling yeah. information. Well, but prior to Hunter Biden, I didn't realize that they could shut stuff down like just that effectively. Yeah. E- effectively, like mm-hmm. I mean, the way they did that was impressive. Yeah, we knew that they could push a bunch of junk out. Yeah, <laughs> um, with relative ease, but yeah, to, turns out they can do the opposite yeah, too. Yeah, to shut down a story from a major um, media outlet was yeah. pretty surprising. Yeah. I agree. Okay. What do you want to go to next? I don't know. Where you want to head? Well, we can um, talk about uh, memes or economics. Let's do memes next because it's kind of kind of still plays with TikTok. Um, okay. The restrict act stuff. I yeah. mean, this is. The, I mean, these two are pretty closely related stories. Yeah, I think that you're right. Okay, so recently uh, Douglas Mackey was uh, convicted of. Essentially, election interference. Yeah, that's that's what they were. It was classified as, I guess. Yeah, um, and <laughs> the whole story is, is like theater of the absurd. Kind yeah, of. like when um, you sent me this and I started reading about it. First, I was immediately was like, "How have I missed this?" Like, mm-hmm. I didn't even know this was going on. Like, I completely missed it. Yeah. Um, um, at the time of the election, when this 2016 election, while this stuff was going on, I think it's fair to classify this guy as a right wing extremist. Yeah. Yeah. Right wing radical. Yeah. Um, but this guy, Douglas Mackey, the conviction here is about him putting out memes on Twitter. Primarily, I guess I think Facebook it was, as well. I'm but, sure they were on Facebook, um, but yeah, stuff from Twitter finds its way to Facebook seems to be the, the yeah. order of things, that, at least that I see. And so he'd created a, a couple of memes, or he was at least distributing. Um, in the the court documents, they talk about you know multiple influencers, like a cabal of right-wing influencers getting together and putting this stuff out there. Um, yeah, like they had this like massive plan to... Yeah. Uh, and the the memes were, um, <laughs> I don't know. You can probably describe this better. Yeah, I, encouraging people to to text their votes in for Hillary Clinton is was what I saw. Yeah. So they they had these things. He 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 knew that I'm doing this podcast, so I couldn't yell at him while he was doing that. <laughs> right. um, I'm gonna tear up the furniture. <laughs> yeah. uh, <clears throat> excuse me. I, I really had to shake off a cough there. Yeah. All right. So um, 
they, you know, they were saying, uh, avoid the lines, uh, yeah. vote from home, <laughs> um, text Clinton to this number, you know, one of those little short frame, like five digit yeah. numbers, uh, <laughs> to vote for Hillary Clinton on November 8th or whatever date it was in 2016. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, even had a little disclaimer at the bottom must be 18 or older. To yeah. It's, it must be 18 or older to vote. <laughs> uh, it must be a U.S. citizen. It's not valid in Guam, Puerto Rico or something else. I don't remember. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, uh, that, uh, is paid for by Hillary Clinton for president. Yeah. Okay. Now see, that part is the only thing that I see wrong with it is the paid for by Hillary Clinton for president. Yeah. That's clearly fraudulent. Yeah. Um, so I think that that's, that's a, a, a route that they could have taken to actually to, to, to get this try guy to in prosecute him. this yeah. guy. Yeah. Um, but what they did was effective and cause they got a conviction. Yeah. Of uh, this guy under a, um, constitutional offense for trying to subvert people's right to vote. Yeah. <laughs> Which I'm sorry if you if you saw that meme and was like, oh, this is the route I'm going. I'm going to vote this mm-hmm. way. I don't think we need you voting. <laughs> I think you can keep your vote. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, I mean, if that's, that's the intelligence level you're dealing with. That that's part of it too. Is that the um, the numbers that I saw was that uh, before the media picked it up and was talking about it, a yeah. hundred people had tried had texted this number. Yeah. With their Clinton vote. Yeah. Um, after the media picked it up, uh, yeah. it was close to 5,000. Yeah. Um, ended up being about 4,900 people, yeah. roughly. Actually, text that number. Now, and it's hard to say if those people were just texting it as a joke or if they actually really thought that's how they were casting mm-hmm. their ballot. Mm. Well, and in his defense, he said, um, well, they were pressing him about that he thought black people were stupid and, and um, uh, easy to. Uh, Manipulate. Yeah, that's not what he was saying. Gullible, I oh, think yeah. is what he was saying. Um, and uh, and they said, so you were trying to uh, convince, you know, get these gullible people to throw away their vote by doing this instead of actually voting. And he was like, well, I didn't think anybody would believe it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> which and, which I actually point. think is a fair defense. Yeah. Because I mean, satire still exists, right? <laughs> and, and obviously, not very many people did anyway. I mean, we're talking about five thousand votes. So how many millions voted in the twenty sixteen election? Yeah, like, yeah, it it definitely didn't sway the election. Yeah, and like, we're talking about uh, you know, this is he's putting this stuff out on Twitter, so it's not like it's localized. It's not like he was hanging signs around his local <laughs> right. um, polling places or something like that. Yeah. Um, Seems like, yeah, you're right. It seems like if you really wanted to try to subvert the vote, like that'd be the way to do it. (laughs) Yeah, and presumably he wasn't the only one that was doing this too. So however many people were pushing this meme around, they only got 5,000 people in the entire nation I remember seeing some of those memes and laughing at them, but I mean, I don't, yeah, that it just seems absurd to try to prosecute this guy. Yeah, I mean, people that thought that they could actually anonymously vote by text. Yeah. It just seems it, that just seems ridiculous to begin with, but it gets worse than that because if you if you actually got you know it retweeted, yeah. then wouldn't it have his tag on it like at, at the on the original tweet from the original tweet? I don't know how Twitter works. I think it would. I'm not yeah. sure. And why you would take voting instructions as a Hillary Clinton voter? Yeah. Why you would take voting instructions from some Twitter guy? whose name on Twitter was Ricky Vaughn, and in his profile picture, he's wearing a MAGA hat and a Bane mask. <laughs> That's the guy who knows what's up. Yeah. <laughs> I'm following his instructions. <laughs> now, I don't know where he actually got the name Ricky Vaughn from, but when I saw it, I thought Rick Vaughn was the name of Charlie Sheen's character in Major League. He was the dumbass pitcher. Uh, was he? <laughs> <laughs> in know. Major League. Oh, that's a funny movie, man. Yeah. Um, anyway, I, I don't know if that's where he got it from, but, you know, the... As a Hillary Clinton voter, why you would take yeah. voting instructions from this guy is just completely beyond the realm of, of understanding. Yeah. Um, well, and would now under the same idea, and this is what worried me about the deal with this case is mm-hmm. so everybody else that reshared that after he shared it. Like so, he shared it, yeah. and then it, wouldn't everybody else be just as culpable for election interference? I, I mean, mean, they participated. 
I mean, that's the way, and that's what I worry about is some kind of pushback down the road here where it's like, oh, well, if you, sh- if you were any part of sharing this meme, you're guilty of blah, blah, blah. Well, I mean, I guess that's a possibility. Um, I, there's a whole lot of bigger questions in my mind about this. So if, if he's charged for, with subverting the vote for lying about how you would be able to vote. Yeah. What if, what if he had just told people not to vote? Yeah. I mean, is he, is he breaking the law then by telling people not to vote? Is <laughs> right? he subverting the vote by telling people not to vote? Yeah. Um, there are plenty what, of them people out there too. <laughs> yeah. Who, who, who gets to decide what kind of lies the government can prosecute? Yeah. Like, it seems to me that first amendment would protect everything except for that paid for by Hillary Clinton for president. Yeah. I like mean, the I, actual content of the, of the instructions and so forth. I don't see how the government can prosecute that. Well, Is because it, does it have a little carve out for elections? Well, because you're allowed to lie. Like the the um, First Amendment absolutely protects your right to tell in truths. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's the reason they put you under oath is so that mm-hmm. you, that's you you can't lie under oath. Right. But like just mm-hmm. out on the street, you can say pretty well what you want. Yeah. Well, and okay, and think about it this way: if if you can be prosecuted for lying to influence the results of elections, yeah. Wouldn't every politician that ever lived be prosecutable? Yeah, because they're all lying. Because they lie <laughs> constantly to influence the results of the election. Yeah, exactly. So I, I don't know. Maybe maybe we're on to something here. <laughs> yeah. It's time to just jail all the politicians. <laughs> right. we, we finally set the precedent we needed to jail all the politicians. Maybe right. this isn't so bad. I was like really upset about this decision, and I'm, my mind's changing right here as we sit. I mean, you're saying jail, and I want to tar and feather. Like <laughs> Whatever, you know. I mean, that, that's sentencing. You, okay. Uh, convict. We'll, we'll start with yeah, conviction. We'll start with convict, and then we'll sentence we'll f- them later. Yeah, yeah. We'll figure out the other part. <laughs> Because yeah. he hadn't been sentenced yet, I don't. It can, it's up to ten years, though. Yeah, well, that's that's what struck me is what the how much it could potentially be, mm-hmm. you know. And I don't know. I, this is another one of those situations where they're using this guy as an example. This is another example of the 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 myth of the rule of law. Yeah. Because what he did here, I don't see anything illegal about it, except for the the fraudulent part of claiming that it came from the Clinton campaign. Yeah. Yeah. The, the rest of that. And, but that would be completely, a completely separate kind of prosecution Yeah, than this. Yeah. Which they probably wouldn't even bother with because he's too small scale. Yeah. I mean, and that would be more, would that be more of like a civil thing? I would think so. That's what, I mean, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm not, I'm not a lawyer. Which generally doesn't carry jail time over civil. Mm. So it, yeah, it would be some big fine or yeah. whatever. Um, so I don't know. I, I think this sets a really bad precedent. It's another way of them um, prosecuting things that they think affected the election in in a way that they don't like. Yeah. I mean, I you know I hate to come around to this, but I think it's an important point. Um, do you think if it had been the other way and this guy had been telling Trump voters to text Trump to et cetera, do you think they'd be prosecuting this guy? Maybe giving him a medal. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far, but I, I think that it would just be something that was just kind of lost. It would be yeah. something that nobody cared about. Oh, no, there's de- that's definitely true. And I might be wrong. I, in a sense, no, I kind of hope that I am. But th- you're not, though. There's no way they would pursue this if it if the shoe was on the other foot. Yeah. Um, so so it, it's another illustration of the myth of the rule of law. The idea of the rule of law that the laws apply equally to everybody. It's just not true. And you know, on the Trump thing again, um, y- you know, he. The idea that, oh, they're they're prosecuting a former president, this just shows that everybody is subject to the rule of law. Oh, no, it God. doesn't. I am it, so tired of hearing that. Yeah, I am too. Because because this is the first president that's ever been prosecuted. Yeah. 
uh, I think it, it's a glaring illustration of the, that the president is still an exception, except for this guy. Yeah. He's an exception to the exception. Exactly. That's not. Yeah. <laughs> that's I mean, not equal. Bill Clinton under the alone, law. like you can yeah. just go down the list, you mm-hmm. know. Um, and I mean, they've all got skeletons, and they've all committed war crimes. Yeah. So I mean, what about the Reagan administration selling arms to? Um, Nicaraguan death squads and importing their drugs. Yeah. <laughs> to <laughs> Pushing help them fund onto them. the, yeah. Um, no. Um, it's, the, they're all criminals. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they just are. And the, so the, I maintain that the reason that they're going after this guy is because he's an outsider. Yeah. He's not part of that political elite that is protected from prosecution. Exactly. Uh, um, okay. So, uh, we got one more thing. We can, we can do economics for a while. Right. Your favorite thing, right? <laughs> um, okay. So here's the, here's the issue is that there's a lot of concern about, uh, trade dealies, trade, trade, de- trade dealios, uh, being made, um, using something other than uh, U.S. currency, U.S. dollars. Ah, yeah. So uh, there was an agreement um, between China and France that became like the first big international trade with Europe that uh, happened in Yuan, Yuan, Yuan. I don't know how you say it. I don't know, thing. yeah. I'm, I'm going with Yuan. That's mostly <laughs> what I hear. Um. There, uh, so Russia and China have agreed to do their their trades in uh, yuan. Um, Russia's talking about using yuan as their um, reserve currency. Uh, Brazil and China have made agreements to make um, trade deals in their own currencies. Yeah. Um, so not necessarily just the yuan, but um, and, and so this is a concern for the U.S. government. And frankly, it's a concern for us in a lot of ways, too, for the citizens of the U.S. Yeah, because we lose don't... the power of the U.S. dollar being the reserve currency of the world. Yeah. Now, of course— I mean, this this whole house of cards that we live under is built off that. Yeah, to a great degree. I mean, yeah, to a massive degree. Um, the stability, such as it is, that our economy has um, owes a lot to the U.S. dollar being the reserve currency. Absolutely. Okay, so now I don't think that the sky is falling here. Yeah. But yeah. there are some things to, to point out. Um, I don't know. When the sky starts coming down, it usually happens fast. That's true. I will say that. Like, I'm not, and I'm with you. Like, I don't think we're there yet. I don't think that this is the end. It's way up there, though. So it, like, you, takes you a while. You feel like we'll I see think. it coming? Yeah. <laughs> I, don't I don't know. know. <laughs> I don't know. Depends on how cloudy it is that day. Uh, so. According to the IMF, um, the U.S. dollar uh, as a reserve currency in central banks worldwide decreased from roughly 66, roughly two thirds, about 66 percent of world um, or central bank reserve currency to 58 percent between um, I I didn't write down the years, unfortunately, but I'm pretty sure it was between 2014 and last year. Okay. All right. So last um, a little less than a decade then. Yeah. So uh, 10 percent. Loss, roughly, a little bit yeah. more yeah. Um, than a 10% loss. Um, that ain't nothing. It's not nothing, but the U.S. dollar still is about three times um, the volume of the next reserve currency in central banks, held in, in central banks, which is the euro. It's about 20% of their yeah. reserves. Yeah. Um, the yuan is like two and a half, I think, or something like that. It's a really tiny yeah. number. And yeah, the one ain't overtaken us. I mean, I, I've never thought that that was the threat. The what I think is the threat is the idea that okay, like we can operate outside the system. Well, we forced it. Well, we have the the U.S. government has forced it on. A, a and bunch I said, of other I governments. said at the time, like that's a mistake. Mm-hmm. Like we shouldn't be encouraging this type of behavior. Yeah. Um, but here we are. Yeah. Well, the U.S. dollar still is used for more than half of all international trade invoices. Yeah. So it's not going away... Immediately. Th- yeah, that yeah. that quickly. And, I mean, it's down roughly 10%, or a little bit more than 10%. It's not... You're right. It's not nothing, but it's yeah. not huge either. Yeah. 
Um, the effects that it has internationally are mostly pretty good. Yeah. For us. I mean, from our perspective. Yeah. At least. Um, without the U.S. dollar being the reserve currency of the world, uh, the U.S. is less able to impose economic sanctions. Yeah. Um, it's less able to finance military adventurism throughout the world. Yeah. The problem with the second one is, is that this won't stop us. Exactly. <laughs> I actually almost <laughs> made a note about that because I was thinking the same thing. Because, yeah, you, I mean, you know, like it just, it, we'll do it anyway and just destroy our economy in the process. Bread for bullets. Yeah. 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 Um, now, domestically, it has a little bit more problem. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, um, it, it, over time, it will result in increased inflation rates. Yeah. Because part of, the, part of what keeps inflation rates down is that there's such a huge demand for U.S. dollars worldwide. Yeah. So as we're printing them out, they're just getting sucked up. Yeah, they're getting sucked up by all these other countries. And if these yeah. other countries stop sucking them up so much, then that money comes home. Oh, yeah. And when the money comes home, then it's there's a lot more dollars When there's in more circulating here. around, the less they're worth. Exactly. Um, Time to start buying gold. The other thing is that the result of that is that they that interest rates will have to rise. Yeah. Um, so it, it could be a real problem for the U.S. economy at home. And we've already seen what's happened with the small rate rise in interest rates already, mm -hmm. like almost collapsing bank. Well, actually collapsing, collapsing bank, some banks. Yeah, collapsing smaller some banks. Yeah. yeah, and the reaction being, well, we'll just print up a bunch more money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. The, um, the answer is we'll just make the problem worse. <laughs> So, uh, and this is what I was thinking about, you know, when I was like, okay, well, the problem is that we won't stop the military adventurism because an easy yeah. answer to this problem, yeah. um, if it arose would be to stop spending so much on the military and let that money come home where it can help people yeah. here. Absolutely. The problem is that you're right. That they're, they're going to hang on to that empire as best they can. Oh, absolutely. Um, un unless we elect a very different kind of politician, which I which don't. I don't see happening anytime soon. Well, well, again, because political because changes happen very fast. They this do. is the kind of thing that can, but can I trigger mean, George that W. Kind of Bush change. ran on non-interventionism. Well, like, they all have. They. That's my point. Yeah. Is that they all have, and so, but look at where we end up. Like it's never stopped. Yeah. Well, I guess. Um, what we need to do is uh, elect a politician that says that and has the backbone to, to stand up and actually yeah. try and do it. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know who there, that may, is. there may be something <laughs> that happens when they take office. I mean, they may pull them to the back and be like, you want to be Kennedy? Like, I mean, <laughs> we'll, we'll fix this right now. You just had a heart attack. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, you know, I mean, they're there's certainly something. capable of making real serious threats. I mean, something's happening because the, it, I mean, you go down the list, they've all done it. They've all backed off of this. So, well, a lot of the stories about the Trump uh, presidency that came out suggest that they just, that they just convinced them. Yeah, they just lied to him. Well, yeah, um, but know. they they convince him that they need to go along, that they have to go along with this stuff. Yeah. Otherwise, it's you know, it's bad for their legacy or, yeah, or whatever. Yeah. Um, they'll be responsible for the next nine eleven. Yeah. And oh, no yeah. president wants to be responsible for nine eleven. Yeah, exactly. Even the president that was in office at the time <laughs> that it happened. Yeah, exactly. So, the. I mean, I, I think that for uh, the kind of person that has a level of pride that I think is necessary and arrogance that mm -hmm. I think is necessary to rise to that level of political office, that's a real serious threat just by doesn't, itself. Doesn't it doesn't have, have to be like a physical threat to them, but just the threat yeah. to the, the way history will look at them and their legacy is enough in a lot of cases probably. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, I, I don't doubt that. Um. There's but, something because I mean it hasn't happened. Like we've had yet to have one to have the stones to go through with it. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, you know, you made the other point um, earlier is that that we it is mostly through the economic sanctions that we'll no longer be able to do that. Rubio's really upset about. By the oh, way, yes. did you hear his little I did speech hear on the floor? That. Yes, um, I did. We won't be able to impose economic sanctions anymore. Oh no! <laughs> right. You mean we won't be able to kill poor people in other parts of the world? Yeah, 
Exactly. Like, uh, that would be a real shame. Yeah, right. Uh, because Ugh. the the imposition of economic sanctions has never done what they want it to do. No. It has never resulted in the people rising up and overthrowing the regime that we want out of power. In yeah. fact, it generally gives that regime uh, fuel it's a um, rally. to hate America and to rally around the rally around the flag effect. Absolutely. Uh-huh. Absolutely. Look how much America hates you. They'd rather see you starve. Yeah. As you're starving. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <You> know, like. <laughs> um, but the uh, the fact that the America has used their control primarily of the SWIFT system, but um, and the U.S. dollar as reserve currency to wage economic war against our rivals throughout the world for decades now is why there are other systems being built up to support economic transactions between nations outside of the U.S. dollar system. Exactly. It's our uh, weaponization of the of the economy that has resulted in people looking for alternatives. Yeah, and the alternatives are out there. Like all they well, they're not. Do, yeah, the, well, like the systems, like the underlying systems, the infrastructure yeah. systems aren't really built out yet. Yeah. But it, they will be. But they will be. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, and that's my point is that like I mean, yeah, they may not exist right at this moment, but the technology exists like the infrastructure can be built like this can happen yeah um and i think a lot of it is just the hubris of our leaders that mm-hmm. you know that well they can't do that like well it's this belief that um that the unipolar world that existed after the collapse of the soviet union was permanent yeah and and, and it, the truth is that now that it's clear that it wasn't permanent a lot of these people in power are doing everything that they can to get back to that yeah which isn't in our best interest there's no. nothing wrong with the multipolar world no well and the thing is is if that that time period had been managed better mm-hmm. it could still be but That's the, true the truth is is like the mistakes made from the collapse of the soviet union on mm-hmm. is what's led us to where we are now i mean i think we talked about it a few years ago on the podcast that the the three major powers uh china russia and the united states are all waging war on the world in very different ways. Yeah. And uh, Russia had been doing it diplomatically. They've been going and making agreements and talking to people uh, in other countries all over the place. China had been doing it economically the way we used to, actually. Like, you think about... I mean, I I think people will find out in the long term that that maybe making all these deals and going into debt with China wasn't the best plan. Like, South America learned about the United States decades ago. (laughs) Yeah. Um, but the United States, both of those methods at least appear, um, protagonistic. Yeah. Like friendly. Yeah. Helpful. Yeah. I'm from the, the US government. Was, I'm here to help. <laughs> yeah. The, the U S was literally yeah. going Bl- to war with the rest of the world. Blowing up the rest <laughs> of the world. Like, which is clearly antagonistic. Funding two sides of wars and like just yeah, you name yeah. it, man. Like we were doing it. Like, um, which is obviously very antagonistic, and it, it has left a bad taste in the mouth of a lot of um, governments. Yeah, especially and in North Africa. It's <laughs> well, all of Africa actually. Um, so, not one nation. I think there's 54 nations in Africa. It's something like that. Yeah. Um, not one nation in Africa signed on with the U.S. with the sanctions against Russia. Wow. Not one. Wow. That's that's something. And um, a bunch of them have been meeting with uh, with Russian and Chinese um, diplomats about continuing trade. Yeah. So. What, whatever power we thought we had in Africa, we've lost. The only power we have yeah. left in Africa is our army in Somalia. <laughs> right. <laughs> our small army in Somalia. Yeah. Actually, I don't know that that's... That, I don't think that's the only place that we still have troops, but... Yeah. It's the only place we... Where um, we're openly at openly, war. Openly, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah. The, the U.S., uh, in its attempt to maintain the empire, has isolated itself um has estranged itself from the rest of the world and by trying to use our economic power to harm rather than help to try and coerce everybody to following the path that we want them to follow 
we've created a huge incentive for people to move away from our economic system. Yeah. And since so much of, of our, um, our government spending, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, like our ability to, to wage actual war and, um, and maintain a fairly stable economy despite really terrible monetary practice is because of, uh, the, um, the U S dollars monopoly essentially in international trade. When we lose that, it does have a big impact. Oh, absolutely. It's just going to be a while before we lose it. it. And it could be turned around, but I just don't think that we will. Well, no, there's no there's no will to turn it around. I, there's will at this level, but there's not enough understanding at this level. And at the higher levels of power where there is an understanding of what to be done, that's yeah. not where their will is. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so that's all I've got. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Man, we got to figure out a way to finish on some kind of <laughs> well, positive we, thing we can, at the end of all these podcasts. We can still talk about the, the gay beers. Okay. Talk <laughs> about the gay beers. <laughs> so um, I'm sure everybody has heard now about, I don't know, like, so social media is so crazy. Um, so Budweiser, I guess they were going to, so I talked to my Budweiser guy today, and he said they actually weren't producing any of these beers that everybody's seen online, like with the rainbow flags and stuff. Mm-hmm. Apparently, they were on, those were only released in Canada, okay. is what he was telling me. But huh. the social media has been full of them this past week. Um, and it just, I don't know, the, the thing that blows my mind about it, and I asked my beer guy today if they were planning on bringing any of these into my store. And the reason I wanted to know was because if he did, they would never sell. Like, so, <laughs> like no man is buying a beer with a big rainbow on it yeah. and, and standing around his car and drinking it. Like, I mean, I'm just saying, or in the yard or whatever you, wherever you drink your beer mm-hmm. out with your boys, you ain't doing it out of a rainbow can. <laughs> I'm just disappointed that they've usurped the rainbow. The rainbow used to be something that just um, represented... You know, like happiness or whatever. Yeah. Like now, it means something very different. It does. <laughs> <laughs> I, if I if I'm texting, if if that's uh, my what do we call them? emoji? The emoji, yeah. It means something very different than what I meant for it to mean. <laughs> yeah, I don't recommend you. You better be careful yeah. sending that emoji out there, buddy. <laughs> well, I, 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 somebody's <laughs> going to get the wrong impression. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know much about this. I heard about the uh, the trans person, the one that was at the White House, Damien or Devin or. I don't know. I can't remember the guy's name. He uh, wasn't any. He was girl, nobody. To the me. girl's name. Oh my bad. She's okay. been a girl for a year. Well, my, yeah. <laughs> and, and and that's on. I, I didn't mean to dead name somebody. Is that what? Well, is that correct? No, like, no. Mm-hmm. It's just a misgender. Misgender. I didn't mean to misgender somebody. Got to learn this like, language. I, I dude, I'm like lost. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I don't know a whole lot about this um, because I, I'm not. You know, I'm I'm not in these circles. I don't drink beer. Yeah, I don't really drink beer. I drink either. whiskey. It's a it's a good hetero. <laughs> yes, right. Um, <laughs> good hetero spirit. I like that. <laughs> oh. um, no, um, but yeah, I mean, there's a big push to boycott Bud Light and like Kid Rock like kicked him out of one of his bars. Bud Light, like it's a whole it's a whole big. Do fiasco. people still know who Kid Rock is? Apparently, the people that go to his bar. Oh, I, okay. <laughs> I don't know. I guess that's fair. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's like a big ordeal. But my like, we're, what's crazy to me, and the reason I asked my guy the question today if he was going to bring any of those beers in is because I don't want to be stuck with them. Like that was yeah. my worry. Is and so the way the stuff works in Alabama, like unless they the. I'm, they're not supposed to pick up beer, like so they can deliver beer, but they don't credit beer so out. So it'll just sit in your in your uh, fridge until it sells. Till till it uh, well, they they call it die, is because when I was talking to the guy mm-hmm. today, he's like, yeah, we call it die whenever it goes out of date. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. <laughs> so so yeah, it would sit in there till it died, and then I would be responsible for disposing of it. <laughs> uh, I don't want that. That's horrible. Yeah. So the teenagers just waiting outside the dumpster. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's laws about how you dispose of it. Oh, too, I'm sure so. that there are. Yeah. I'm sure uh, there are. And I've had to dispose of a lot of beer before. I've done it with a pitchfork, like lay it all the 12 packs out on the ground. And then you take <laughs> a pitchfork to them. 
That sounds like fun. It was it was fun. Okay. <laughs> I reeked of beer afterwards. <laughs> uh, that doesn't sound like fun. <laughs> no, that's, that's no got fun a terrible at all. Smell. Yeah, it does. So I don't I don't understand how people drink it. I've tried a few times. I, I just couldn't. There couldn't was a time it. where I drank a fair amount of beer, and there was a time. I still, even now, like there are certain situations, like if I'm eating hot wings, I'll drink some beers. Um, same thing, crawfish, I'll eat, I'll drink some beers. Okay, but it's only, it's only, it seems to be food. Mm-hmm. Like there's certain things that beer just tastes good with, and I think those are the only two that I have. <laughs> beer and hot, or yeah, hot mm-hmm. wings and um, crawfish. Crawfish, yeah, mm-hmm. those. They okay. So I'll take your word for it. But I'll, yeah, I'll stick with my whiskey. It's it's amazing and that companies and would make the decision to and brandy and brandy <laughs> to to go down this like because it's completely against what their their audience wants. You mm-hmm. know. Well, so. there's some. Um, I think they were saying on No Agenda that uh, that you know, like a trans influencer could just start saying that they're representing this company, and yeah. it would be. Um, like uh, image suicide for them to say no. Yeah. All right. They, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're almost trapped. Like they can't. The, they can't be anti-trans. Yeah. So they would have to just kind of go along with it. Which is the reason, like these for these companies, you just have to be agnostic. Like you just yeah. have to stay. Well, I think away that's. From a, it. That, I think that's hilarious in and of itself. Well, even if you were agnostic, if somebody started claiming that yeah. they represented you. Yeah. But you like, what do you do? People of all persuasions enjoy our beverage like, and just leave it at that. Like, Catch 23, you know, yeah, you can't just, say you are, you can't say you're not. Like, you, you just have just, to stay out of it. You just have yeah. to, you, you let out a press release and be like, Hey, everybody likes our beer. What can we say? I said, Catch 23. That's funny. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's Catch 22. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, anyway, right. I don't have anything else on it. I just, it's, like people have are up in arms about it that I've yeah. talked to. It's it's a thing. I felt like it was worth addressing, <laughs> at least on some level. Okay. Well, it was, it was at least a funny way to end the show. Yeah. yeah. Um, Going out on something light. So, uh, yeah, we'll we plan to be back next week. Um, everybody have a happy Ooh. Easter. Next week is going to be tough. Oh, is it? Why? Um, I I go out of town Thursday. I won't be back till Monday. Okay. Probably should have told you this before we start podcasting. Yeah, we'll talk about it after. We'll figure something out. Yeah, we'll need to figure something out because I am going to be gone. Okay. Um, all right. Well, we may be back next week. Yeah. And we may have a week off. We'll see. For Easter. Late Easter. Late, <laughs> Orthodox Easter. Ah, there you go. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> which, so. does that align us with the Russians again? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Probably. Um, whenever we're back. Uh, in the meantime, um, we hope that you will uh, like and subscribe. Uh, you can subscribe on iTunes, YouTube, Podbean. Um, like and share. Uh, comment. You can always email me at michael at the liberty mic.com. Is that everything? That's everything. I oh, think so. Um, yeah, leave reviews, etc. Uh, tell your friends. All those, all those things that help us out. Yep. Get our message out there. Which is a message that's positive for everybody. Absolutely. A message yeah. of inclusion. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, we laugh like that was a joke, but it's not really. <laughs> it's really not. Like, <laughs> just anyway, hijacking their language. <laughs> um, we'll be back when we're back and we finally get this right. In the meantime, try to stay free. Life short, live free. Ciao. Later. Later.